Hey everyone, if you want to make your own podcast but you don't know where to begin, Spotify for Podcasters makes it super easy. They've got everything in one place, it's totally free, and you can make money while doing it. Here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start doing it today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and pretty much everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also supported, and you can even conduct polls and Q&As. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, the platform is totally free. No catch, totally free. When I wanted to start my own podcast, I did not know where to begin, and I didn't think it was even possible. And Spotify for Podcasters made it happen. They made it easy. They made it quick. And I am doing something that I love. What more can I ask for? So if you're interested in starting your own show, you can do it. And I highly recommend you give this a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Hey, everybody. What's up? Welcome back to another episode of Everything Kratom, the podcast about anything and everything. Kratom. Great to have you with us on this Wednesday morning, hoping all is well with you. I've had a sudden realization that I want to talk about right now. And just an FYI, I'm doing this episode from home today. So if you hear chickens in the background, you know I'm there. <laughs> with that in mind, let's get into it. And thank you to the chickens. Today, I wanted to talk about this sudden realization I had while getting ready for this episode. I was about to turn on the mic to talk about something completely different. And then I realized something. And if I'm way behind on the curb here, my apologies. But here's what I realized. You know how yesterday I was talking about storage and specifically how I found this bag of Indo White, eight ounces of Indo White Kratom in my cabinet that I didn't really remember putting there until I saw it just the other day. And I noticed when I saw it that it had like a one to two centimeter opening in the zip block part of the top part of the bag. It wasn't like a sandwich ziplock bag, but it had that zipping mechanism to close up top. And I noticed that there was a small gap there. And so it had been exposed for, you know, to the air for like three weeks. It wasn't airtight. And when I tried it, I felt next to nothing. So it was like the first definitive experience I've had where I did not experience like pretty much anything from Kratom and the only like reason why, I, as, I, as far as I can tell, is that it was exposed for three weeks. Now, it wasn't like bad, you know, in terms of like, you know, mold or anything like that. It's just it just was not airtight for that long. So now this morning, I'm about to turn on the mic to start this episode. And I'm just thinking through like, huh, that was interesting that I discovered that. And I'm glad I like talked about that yesterday on the episode. And I was starting to try and shift my thinking to what I was going to talk about today, which will now have to be a different episode. When I realized, wait a second, when I took that, you know, small, brief kind of like hiatus of Indo-White Kratom, semi-purposeful, semi-not, um, just like a couple months ago, and I didn't have it for a little while, like a month or so or two, I can't remember. When I took it again after that break, it it was, I did an episode on how much more enhanced it felt to take it for the first time after that amount of time and how I don't I mean I'm sure everyone can develop some tolerance to anything but like that how I can't take more than three and a half grams of anything and I've never had to up the amount of kratom that I've taken in all the years that I've you know been on and off again with kratom ever and so even the ones I use the most like Indo White so I don't think it was a tolerance thing really but I wasn't ruling that out and then I it dawned on me well the kratom that came in the mail was airtight like like it was airtight not exposed got to me i opened it had some i mean i closed it again and obviously i don't leave my bags open it was like an accident but over time like unless you're very intentional about like having special jars or containers for your kratom um it's gonna be exposed to air even bags you know a lot of bags aren't actually airtight even if they're airtight (laughs) it's like air can go through the actual fabric of the bag depending on the bag and a lot of these companies send bags that that do have some some way of air getting in even if it's closed and i wondered huh is it is it the exposure to air 
or lack thereof in that case, that made Kratom so much more effective for me. And I I struggle to like go with this theory because I don't want to like sound like, oh, I can't ever have a tolerance like d- develop to Kratom. Like I'm just, I'm unique. No, I, I mean, that's not what I'm saying. And I certainly have noticed a teensy bit of change, but overall not really anything substantial in my opinion, to the point where I'd think tolerance would be the explanation of that. And also I was taking Kratom that whole time I wasn't taking Indo White. It was just that specific type of Indo, like that was that type, Indo White, that I wasn't taking that whole time. So I don't, like, unless it's unique to each type where you can develop a tolerance to each type, like, it, it just doesn't line up for me. And I think I even remarked on that in that episode. So I was kind of like left hanging there. And now I'm starting to think, well, you know, the Kratom that I was taking while I wasn't taking the Indo White that month, I had already had. Like I ordered some more, but I already had like the Kratom that I was that I had there and I didn't order any more into white for a while. And and then that Kratom, even though I had it sealed well, as you open up the bags of Kratom that you have or the jars or whatever it is, you're exposing it to air. So over time, you're going to expose it to air. It's going to happen, even if it's airtight, because you're going to open it eventually. So does that does that have anything to do with the fact that like after that like indo white the first couple times it seemed like it had this additional little enhanced part of how it was working for me and it normally works amazing anyway but then after that it kind of went back to normal like very very effective and helpful and it still is to this day um i used some this morning actually but it doesn't have that that additional little boost that I think that it did that first time or second time after that long break. So I'm wondering if air has something to do with it. And from what I've been reading about recently, it seems like the alkaloid content of Kratom changes over time. And especially so like once you pick it, a lot of things start happening to Kratom just naturally, even before you process it in the various ways people process it or, you know, whatever people are, you know, packaging it in or how long it takes to get to you. Um, it seems like Kratom, the second you pick the plant and start, you know, it starts to dry or any, even like it's separated from its roots, right? Or, or the earth. The second it's separated from that, it starts to change its profile. And, um, and what does that mean for if it's in kind of like a stable, you know, airtight container after being processed? So it's already undergone a lot of change, but then it's not exposed to any more air. And then one day it's exposed to a little bit of air and you take it and then a little bit more air and more processes are are happening. And then, you know, a few days later it's been exposed to air a few different times and has had that interaction and whatever process it would be that's changing its, its alkaloid content more. And how does that factor in? So there's a lot there and certainly I'm not the one who is qualified to get into all of the nitty gritty around this stuff. But a lot of you actually are and have been sending me messages, which has been so helpful. And thank you very much for your input and for like just giving me your insight. It's been amazing. And if you're interested in being on the show, if you want to send me a comment, that's great. And if you're interested in being on this show and you want to share your experience, whether it's a horrific, terrible experience with Kratom and you hate it and want it banned, or if you love Kratom to the moon and back and you want to talk about how it's, you know, been amazingly helpful in your life or a friend's life or family's life or if you want to just kind of talk through it you're in the middle or you don't really care but you just want to be on a podcast it's all good send me a message to anything everything kratom at gmail.com anything everything kratom at gmail.com i'd love to have you on the show we could talk doesn't really have to have much of a format and i'm down with whatever so email me and other than that thank you so much for listening You all are great. And we will be back tomorrow. All right. Talk to y'all then. Bye-bye.